Um, this has concerned me for the last year, actually. Joining us now is Crimson Global Academy Executive Principal and former Auckland Grammar Headmaster John Morris, ONZM. John, g'day, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Duncan. Nice good to, to have be you here. on. Yeah, great to have you on. Now, uh, this is, uh, should I be concerned? I've been really worried about the standard of education the kids are receiving, not because the teachers are bad or anything, but because it, because of what it is. They're receiving this thing remotely in lockdown. They're getting an hour here, an hour there. Is it any good, this education right now? Well, it's, it's a tough time. It's a tough time for teachers, tough time for kids, for parents as well. And uh, the more lockdowns we have, of course, things are going to get uh, even worse. And I think uh, it's unfortunate, really, that it's happened again just for another week. We're away, just the beginning of the school year, when teachers are wanting to set the tone, set examples and so on. So it's, it's, not, it's not an ideal scenario at all. Uh, and I think often um, schools um, are doing their very best. There's no doubt about that. And the ministry also doing their best. You know, they sent out... Um, devices and fixed up Wi-Fi for schools that haven't got it and so on. Um, we were very lucky at CGA because we were able at the very beginning when we started to, to make it clear to parents and to students uh, what we expected, what was going on and so on. So that when lockdown came in March last year, we were pretty well prepared. But that wasn't the case for schools who normally have a bricks and mortar approach um, and they have to suddenly change over to, uh, to online learning. And online learning itself has so many different meanings and so many different modes. Uh, not all are the same and not all are as if Mm. I wonder if we, if we pick up bad habits that we simply can't shake at, at the end of it, and I'm talking about the kids, uh, do they become, I'm not saying they're lazy, but do, do they become a little bit sort of more haphazard in their learning? Do they become, do they cut corners, so they can't be bothered, it's only an hour, let's get it done, and do they expect it only to be an hour from here on in? Do you know what I mean? Do we pick up bad habits? Well, I'm not sure they pick up bad habits. I mean, I, I look at my uh, my grand, granddaughters who are at a primary school, and uh, I know that the primary school is doing its very, very best, but there's only so much that can be done. And you just hope, and I know that they're missing school when they're not there. And so I think the fact is that they can get back there, they'll get back with their friends, get back to the teachers, and they're back to normality. But it, the more often this happens, the more complicated that's going to be. Mm. But hopefully they don't pick up the bad habits. I mean, that's, the, that's a, a, a really bad scenario for it all. But school's about more than just exercise books, and having your head in exercise books is isn't it? I mean, school is, is, is more, I didn't think I'd ever use this word, but holistic in a sense, isn't it? Sorry, I missed, I missed that, Duncan. Did you say that again? Sorry? <laughs> school is about more than just exercise books and having your head in the classroom. It's, it's about oh, yeah. all sorts of different uh, learning techniques yeah. and socialising people around you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, there's, there's no doubt that's, that that's going to be missed by a lot of a lot of students. I think that the students that are doing it full-time with us or part-time with us even at CGA, um, they're, they're used to that and they can still use the, the socialisation aspect of school as well. They still mix with friends uh, outside of school and do all that sort of thing. So um, there is that point. There's a good points to online learning as well as the bad points that people can pick out. From our point of view, we think that we're doing a great job uh, and that's actually seen in our examination results. We've just had our A-level students' results come back from October, November with a 100% pass rate and uh, an average mark of over 90% for a subject. So, you know, it can, it can be really, really effective, um, but often um, it depends the sort of mode that this chosen. Um, as CJ, we are what we call synchronous. We teach um, in real time with live teachers, experienced teachers, and unfortunately schools can't do that. It's not the way that they do it. A lot of it is just sending out uh, resources to students and they fill them in, get them back, and that's about it. So they don't see much of a teacher during that online time, and that is a, is a real weakness. And it's hard for schools. I can understand why they can't do it, because online learning can be fantastic. I'm interested when you talked about your teachers then. I mean, who are your teachers, your mentors and tutors, John? Mm. What's the calibre? Because schools in themselves are screaming out for teachers and can't get them. Yeah. That's a very good question. Yeah, no, we're actually thrilled with our teachers. We have um, 43 teachers based in 12 countries around the world because we have to service our students who are transnational. We've got, um, well, at the moment, just over 300 students, and they're in 25 countries. So the teachers uh, that we've picked, we've got a number that are based in, in New Zealand, all New Zealand registered teachers, all experts in the A-level program that we offer. We've got a couple of teachers in Australia, we've got uh, 14 teachers based in the UK and Europe and we've got three based in Asia. They service all the various time zones. So that's a really, really important thing. All of them, no matter where they live, have to be New Zealand registered. That's part of the deal that we had to do with the Ministry when we got permission to open online school. And so they're all experts, they're all experienced, they know all about online learning, they know the syllabus that we're using. So, um, you know, and, and I've said this to several people that, you know, the people that we've appointed, I would appoint to any 
school I was head of. We were really, really proud and very pleased with the calibre of the teachers that we've got. Hey, hey John, what's, um, and we appreciate you coming on today too, it's a fascinating discussion. What, what's, the, what's the greatest mistake or the biggest mistake you can make with online learning? Um, the biggest mistake, <laughs> you're talking from a student point of view from or a, a teacher point, point of view? view? Yeah, well, well, both are theorists. I mean, do teachers uh, make mistakes? I, I never came across a teacher yeah. that made a mistake. <laughs> no, all teachers think they're great teachers, no doubt about that. Um, uh, no, um, look, I think from the kids', kids point of view, you, uh, you have to have, I think, certain, uh, certain dispositions to be successful with online learning. I think you need to be um, an independent learner yourself, that, you know, motivated, you can, um, you know, focus particularly well, that you've got to have good time management skills, that you have to have a little bit of technological background as well, because, you know, there's a fair bit of tech involved in that, and you do have to have great parental support as well. That's an, another important thing and that's not just uh, support academically but also emotionally because students do can can find it hard to focus for that length of time it's why most of the lessons that in fact all the lessons that we teach uh, tend to be you don't do one hour lectures that's not the, the way to do online learning you make sure that you chunk the, the the lesson up with all the content that you require you do lots of uh, quick quizzes tests and so on it's very uh, interactive and so students can relate to that and I think that's the important thing for students is that they go there and of course the students as well, we run very small classes of around about six to eight students on average, which means that uh, every student can participate and can be interactive, and that is a really important part of online learning. And so if you're a quiet person, you don't want to get involved well, actually, that's pretty tough because you really, really need to participate mm. well in the, in the lessons. That's the important thing. Mm. Hey, good to catch up with you today. We really appreciate um, your, um, your take on all this um, this morning. Crimson Global Academy Executive Principal and former Auckland Grammar Headmaster John Morris, ONZ. Appreciate your time, John. Uh, take care. Okay, thanks, Duncan. You're very welcome. Thanks a lot. Bye. You're very welcome. It is three.